It's always funny to see what the right will come up with when it comes to talking about separation of church and state. And Louis Gohmert, who's a Republican congressman from Texas, we've talked about him before. A guy seems to be completely off his rocker when it comes to issues of religion and government. He was in an ad for an up upcoming Christian TV event called Washington, a man of prayer. And he recalled that the U.S. House of Representatives once met in what is now known as National Statuary Hall. And he pointed out that there is actually a one way separation of church and state, saying that there is a provision. Thomas Jefferson knew all about it, where the founding fathers and Thomas Jefferson wanted one way influence when it comes to church and state. Church should be able to influence the state. Watch what he did. And when I got the report back, I glanced down and the first thing I saw was something like Madison didn't do this. And I thought, I thought Madison did come to church in here. But as I read the report, it talked about how uh, President Thomas Jefferson, we're talking about the guy who coined the phrase separation of church and state, who said there should be a wall of separation between church and state. But it was to be a one way wall where the state would not dictate to the church, but the church would certainly play a role in the state. Yeah. So let's see if I understand this, Lewis. Uh, the U.S. was created to escape the religious oppression of England and a system was set up here in the U.S. where churches would be able to influence government in a one way fashion, but not the other way around. How stupid do you have to believe the founding fathers were to believe what Louis Gohmert is here, that they came to the U.S. escaping religious oppression in England and set up a system that would have allowed the exact same thing to happen. Uh, you, you'd have to be an idiot to believe this, and you would have to think the founding fathers were idiots to have created such a system. But if you're a devout person, this is exactly what you want to believe, especially after Louis Gomer reassures you that, yes, all of these guys were, were, were Christians. They went to church, they prayed, they were, these are the types of men that they were, and this is what they meant. You know what? That's what, that's what the people want to hear. If you break down Louis Gohmert's argument in a graphic, logical representation of how you would do like in an introductory philosophy class, what are the what are the foundations first of, of Louis Gohmert's statement? What are the premises? And then what is his conclusion? We know the conclusion ultimately is that our our government was designed so that church would influence the state. You actually have no evidence if you actually break it all down. He says a lot of stuff like, for example, the founding fathers prayed, but that in a logical sense, in a sequentially logical system doesn't lead to his conclusion. There are no facts actually presented that would that serve as evidence for Louis Gohmert's conclusion. And I would hope that people realize that when they hear statements like this. Sadly, I know that a lot of people don't realize that very often you hear what sounds like data and then you hear a conclusion and it sounds somewhat connected that it follows logically when it really doesn't like in this case.